Hello everybody. This is afternoon. Pray with me. So it's funny because I just noticed this little buckle right here behind my head and I have this on my car because Isaac sometimes throws his toys, a uh, very heavy duty projectile towards the front. So Chuck installed this little uh, shield <laughs> to protect us from flying toys. But as I was I just looked to make sure it was recording. I noticed this little this little thing right here. And I thought, this doesn't look very aesthetic. You know, a lot of people, when they post on YouTube or they post on Instagram, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be polished. And I was sharing with my friend Maite a long time ago that one of the things that I endeavor to do on, on Pray With Me is to, it's okay if your mascara is running down your cheeks. It's okay if, um, you know, you just woke up in the morning and you only had half a cup of coffee. It's okay if your autistic child is in the video. It's okay if you're driving in traffic, but you want to pray out loud to the Lord. That's the whole beauty of prayer. It doesn't have to look nice. It doesn't have to look aesthetic. And I really think, and I'm sure you guys would agree with me that the best, most beautiful prayers are actually look, uh, not very nice, not very put, put together. What did the um, the one um, sinner say? Be merciful to me, I'm a sinner, right? Did not look pretty, but that prayer was accepted. But the Pharisee that went over there and said, dear God Almighty, I thank you that I tithe. That, they, that one was rejected. So the, the beautiful thing about prayer is it doesn't have to look pretty, it doesn't have to look polished. You don't need to put a filter actually you shouldn't put a filter because if you put a filter on your prayers or on on your intimacy with the lord then it's not genuine so i just wanted to share that because i think that this little book right here is funny um so today right now is going to be the afternoon prayer time morning noon and and evening you will hear my song my prayer will be directed to thee and you know it kind of reminds me of daniel Daniel, um, he prayed, you know, three times a day with the window open. And I remember I used to have Bible study in my home on Tuesdays. And I remember thinking I should switch my Bible study date from Tuesdays to another day because it was lawn mowing day, not my uh, gardener, but someone on the street got their uh, lawn tended to on that Tuesday. But that's the date that worked for everybody. That's the date that worked for me. And I thought, you know, we just have to learn how to live with distractions, right? I never changed it, but isn't it funny how when you want to go to prayer, your phone rings. When you want to go to prayer, you get distracted by emails, by a knock on the door. I cannot tell you how many times that that's happened. But again, that's another reason why I love us being able to pray together this way because you could start praying and press pause or you could listen another time, another date. So anyway, don't pray pretty, pray genuine. That's my encouragement. So this is our afternoon prayer. Oh, Father, we praise your name, God. You are God. You are our rock. You are Jehovah. You are the great I am. You told Moses, I am that I am. And oh, how I would love to see a burning bush. I would love to know what that looks like, to see a bush that's on fire but not consumed. But in a way, I do know what that looks like. That looks a lot like our lives because we throw, go through fires, but we're not consumed. We choose to not let the cares of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. We choose not to let the flesh, the world, and Satan consume us. Instead, oh God, we are consumed by you, the all-consuming fire. You consume us, Lord. You are the God who saves. You are Alkanah, jealous God. You are mighty. You are awesome. You are benevolent, which means kind. You are altogether lovely. You chasten us, Lord. You discipline your kids. We don't like it in the moment. It hurts. It stings. But you do discipline us as needed, God. And you also convict us. One of my sisters prayed the other day, thank you for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for convict for the gift of conviction. I thought, wow, I never thought of that. And that's why it's so beautiful to pray together because our sisters and our brothers and the pastors and teachers, they often pray things or share scriptures that we hadn't thought about in a while or maybe never thought about. So I want to say right now, thank you for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, it's it's the noontime hour. It's the time of lunch. It's the time of refreshment. Many people will go outside and get a breath of fresh air. I sometimes see teachers walking near uh, Chafee High School uh, just exercising on their little uh, lunch break. 
Thank you for breaks, God. Thank you for uh, refreshment, Father. Some of us wake up real early, and by the time lunch comes, our stomach is grumbling. I know my daughter, Olivia, she has a, a, a body clock, and if she does not eat by 1 p.m., she gets hangry. You know that, Lord Jesus. But may we crave you more than earthly food. We want to hunger and thirst for your righteousness, Lord. Whether it's a soup and sandwich, whether it's a smoothie, whether it's a quick on-the-go fast food item, whether it's a packed lunch, whatever we're going to eat for lunch, may we crave you the bread of life more. May we want to taste your, your treats, the treats of your word more than, than a snack, than a lunchtime treat. Father, you know me, God. I love sweets. I love candies, brownies, cookies, um, muffins, scones. Oh my, those are the things, Lord, you know that I like. But I want to crave you, God, more than coffee, more than sweets, more than treats. Isaac's favorite thing to get at Starbucks is a pink birthday cake cake pop. May we be more delighted than Isaac is to eat and devour that cake pop, Lord. We want you. We want your will in our lives, God. And whatever's happened this morning... Lord, we surrender it to you. It's noontime. There's nothing we can do to change those morning hours. We can't change the past, but we can live in the present. So help us to live in your presence. As it says in Psalm 16, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your grace that saves us. Thank you for sustaining us in our weakness. Thank you that by your stripes we're healed. Lord, you've been using that verse in my heart over and over again. You want me to go to the cross over and over again. You want all of us. Us, your sons and daughters to go back to the cross over and over again and not to grow weary and well-doing for in due season we will reap if we faint not how many times around this new hour do we faint we're exhausted lord we're just weary from the hot sun of the day or if it's chilly we're cold by then as as today's so beautiful it's an overcast day it's not triple digits hot like it's been but when I walk with Isaac I get chilly I have to bring a sweater I have to put a scarf on sometimes I wear two sweaters because I I get chilly very easily may you be that warm blanket for us Abba Father be our comfort comfort us God be like that space heater that people use when they're um when they're at a cubicle and they're so cold and someone's bumping the AC and they press that little space heater, would you be that for us? Would you be that pillar of fire uh, by night and the cloud by day? The cloud of day to shade us and the pillar of fire at night to warm us, God. Be our warm blanket when it's cold and be our um, our umbrella when it's hot and, or when it's rainy, God. You know what I'm trying to say. So thank you, thank you for this noontime prayers. I pray, Lord, that you would meet us, that we would not grow weary, whatever our tasks are, checking emails, uh, going to the grocery store, picking up kids, dropping off kids, homeschooling, doing work, out of the office work, whatever it is that you put our hands to do, may we do it heartily with all our heart unto the Lord and not to man. May we never Never be people pleasers, Lord. Forgive us of our every sins. And may we not try to do too much, Lord. We know, God, we confess that we could be busy bodies and doing too much is not a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and do a lot. No. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self control. Help us to know when to say yes to something and when to say no to something. And Lord, the noon day, noon hour of the day, the afternoon, is often when those curvy balls come. When those fiery darts from Satan come. And we're, we're dodging bullets, Lord. May we affix that armor again if we have to ask you to put it on us again. Maybe maybe we got hit in the head by, by a bullet and our helmet is, is wonky. It's halfway. You know what I'm trying to say, Lord. Adjust our armor. Fill us with your spirit, God, so we could go back into that battle as your soldier, as your son and daughter of Yahweh, the Most High God. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you adoration. You are everything. We are nothing. You are big. We are small, Lord. We love you so much. Thank you for this noon hour prayer, afternoon prayers, and we won't stop. We will pray without ceasing as your scripture tells us to do. Thank you for your blood. We plead the blood over each other, the blood of Jesus over me and myself and my family and the blood of Jesus over my beloved friends friends and family praying alongside with me in this noon hour in Jesus mighty name. Amen.